Hello, my name is Mira and I'm a lorekeeper in one of Yorkstaff's libraries and today I wanted to talk about my experience as a brand new player in the Elder Scrolls Online. Now the Elder Scrolls Online was launched on April 4th, 2014. It is a USA based game, takes up about 128 gigabytes on my PC and it has all the monetization options. You can buy it once and play forever or there's an optional monthly sub that allows you to play all the DLC and gives you buffs and a crafting bag that sort of stuff or you can buy the expansions and DLC separately as well. Now I originally <laughs> <laughs> uh, I bought the game on Steam in 2017 during a sale, but for some reason, I suspect my PC couldn't handle playing it at the time. I didn't play it at the time. <laughs> I started playing in earnest on March 17th, 2024, so about a month ago, and at the time of writing this, have racked up 176 hours. A whoopsie poopsie. I meant to do a review after 10 hours of playing, but uh, sorry, I guess? <laughs> ESO just kind of has that like true MMORPG magic. It reminds me a lot of when I first started playing Guild Wars 2. The quests and the writing and the voice acting and the sound and the music and the graphics are all so wonderful and lovely. It's really immersive and it really puts an emphasis on the RPG in the MMORPG. The setting and the story are really the stars of the show, honestly. As far as MMOs go, ESO itself is really new player friendly. The tutorial was very easy to understand and interesting. The cutscenes and the story sucked me in right away. Very rarely have I found myself having this much fun in just the tutorial. Combat is enjoyable. I'm having lots of fun with all of the different builds and skill lines you can mess around with. There are ones for your class, the weapon you use, crafting, guilds, all sorts of stuff. And you can use like whatever weapon you want, regardless of your class. It's, it's really neat. One of my gripes is the inventory system. System. You can pay $14.99 a month for ESO Plus, which gives you a crafting bag, which completely eliminated the need for a bank or inventory expansions. I guess let's just rip this band-aid off now. Yeah, um, <laughs> uh, ESO has a lot of stuff locked behind a paywall, which is whatever. I know every MMO does that, but that doesn't mean that I have to like it. <laughs> <laughs> Especially like the fact that the only way to get certain mounts or like pets is to buy loot boxes. I personally don't like gambling. Ugh, whatever. I just I just hate when games make things available only through the cash shop or gambling mechanics. Even if it's a grind or if it's like difficult to get, I wish they would make it available to get through in-game efforts, not just Dragon. luck or IRL cash. <laughs> Like, for example, the crafting bag. It exists, but the only way to get it is ESO+. Plus. Outside of that, the regular inventory system can be upgraded via bag merchants, bank merchants, and stable keepers. Another thing that um, I find a little bit odd is that there's no central marketplace, trading post, or market board. Like in the other MMOs I play, you have to like join a guild and then you can sell things for slash with that guild. But one like big hub where all players can like trade and sell stuff doesn't exist. So unless you just shout into the void in zone chat in the hopes of buying or selling something, you just have to go get it yourself, which is definitely different for an MMO. Um, I honestly don't hate or love that about the game, but it is uh, indeed a thing. Or I guess not a thing technically. <laughs> Anyway, I've been having a, uh, a really good time doing quests. I'm currently doing the Dominion questline and I'm at, I think, the end of it. I'm in Reaper's March at the moment. After reading so much about the Bosmer when I played Skyrim, it was really cool to actually be able to visit their homeland in ESO. Same for the Khajiit. I've always played a Khajiit. I find their culture the most fascinating of all the peoples of Tamriel. I've been having a good time. I'm having a really good time. My fiance got me the Necrom expansion because Hermaeus Mora is my favorite. <laughs> so I played through the Necrom questline and uh, oh my gosh, I had so much fun. I know I totally skipped like the entire MSQ because Necrom was like the most recent thing that came out, <laughs> but I couldn't help myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> Exploring Apocrypha, which like really we only get snippets of in Skyrim's Dragonborn DLC, was like a dream come true. I loved it so much. Like the entire time I was just like, oh my gosh, I would live here IRL if given the chance. It, it's like perfect. The UI and controls of the game are fine. No real complaints here. I did rebind a few things, but rebinding is really easy. The hotbar and quick slot system is a little bit restricting. 
especially when you like contrast it with the freedom of the skill system itself. But it's it's fine, it's workable. Something that did kind of bamboozle me was that like your current buffs and uh, rebuffs from like food and the standing stones and stuff is like turned off for visibility on the UI, like the HUD by default. Like you have to go in and actually like turn it on so you can see how much time you have left on your food and stuff. You can still see the info in the character menu, but like during combat, it's pretty inconvenient. And I just don't really know why that was automatically turned off for the HUD, you know? I feel like that should be automatically turned on. Something I really, really love is the dark anchors. You can hear and see them from like so far away and the noises they make are so like visceral. It's so cool. Whoever did the sound for the dark anchors, you are a god. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing I love is the sneaking and all the thieving type stuff you can do, like pickpockets, pick locks, uh, steal stuff, you know. That system feels very much like how it felt in Skyrim, and it's something I haven't really experienced in any of the other MMOs that I, I play or I've tried. Another thing that ESO gets the feel of really right um, is the companion system. Again, it feels a lot like in Skyrim, where you have to finish specific NPCs quests, and then they'll follow you around and they help you in battle and they get like special dialogue and you have a rapport system. I just really love it. I'm a really sentimental, emotional, squishy person. I really love the companion system. Ember is my favorite companion so far. She's just a joy to have around. I do wish the companions had their own inventories like in Skyrim though. That would be nice. It is what it is. Really the only other issue I had in the game was the community? I'm really hesitant to say this, but like, I didn't really know how to feel about the community. I've only really interacted with people in game, and unfortunately, most of those interactions with other players have been pretty negative. I had to turn zone chat off entirely, like the first day, because of conversations that were happening in it that were just really uncomfortable and inappropriate and you know that might just be my personal preference but like kids play this game come on guys there's no need to talk about how you want to be queen iren like in chat you know and then like the dungeon finder experience like i my main mmo is final fantasy 14. I would say that like the worst toxic player experience I've had in 14 is like the baseline for the player experience I've had in ESO. Everyone is just like so hostile and like doesn't give a <laughs> about each other. At least that's one of I I've experienced like uh, this didn't happen to me, but it happened to my fiance. He was in a dungeon with someone who like threatened to he just said horrible things. He like said he wished that his family would like die of cancer and stuff. What year is this? This isn't like 2010 Call of Duty guys. Like what the fuck? <laughs> Anyway, the, peop the, the, the players who play ESO clearly take the game very seriously and have no chill, and if you turn the chat off, it's fine. But yeah, I, I didn't have the greatest experience in-game with the community. I haven't interacted with the community outside of the game, uh, because now they scare me, so... <laughs> Um, overall, I would say that ESO is a very fun MMO. A good MMO for new gamers, beginners, or people who have never, like, tried an MMO before. It isn't too overwhelming with its systems and mechanics, and it explains everything clearly, at least in my opinion. It is pretty pushy with its cash shop, but unfortunately that's just, like, how the gaming industry is as a whole these days. It sucks, and I don't like it, but it is the way it is. <laughs> I would definitely recommend you try ESO, especially if you have ever played an Elder Scrolls game before. Getting to experience all the places you could only previously read about in the other games is is really cool, like that in itself, the novelty of it. But yeah, I feel like I rambled a lot in this video, so TLDR, is ESO fun in 2024 as a new player? Yes, yes, very, it is, definitely. I'm very picky about the games I decide to devote my time to, so MMOs especially I tend to be very critical of because MMOs are just a huge time investment. They just, they just are. But ESO is worth that investment, in my opinion. I will definitely still be playing for a long time to come. The characters and their personality and the story and the music and the voice acting and the combat and just the questing system and the skill system and the companion system and the sneaking stealing. All things I really, really love about the game. The level of monetization and like the, the paywally inventory system and the community are kind of like the cons. <laughs> I also wish that there was like more options for character creation. I feel like even in Skyrim, the character creator was more expanded, but that's just my personal opinion. All in all, I do think that the pros outweigh the cons for me anyway. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and listening to me gush about ESO. Um, I hope to see you next time here in the library. <laughs>